Let's move on to the topic 2 that's about external environment. So when we talk about external environment, uh, you know, same like how an organization or HR department does get affected by the internal environment, similar way there are a lot of external factors also which affect the HR department, you know, strategy. So let's look at what are the kind of, you know, major factors. So first to start with uh, the broad kind of a factor like your political and a legal kind of a factor. When we talk about political and legal factors, uh, broadly again, it has been classified into three major areas. One is your legislature. When when it comes to legislation, uh, legis legislating, it means a parliament level that a bill has been passed for labor related you know, laws. And uh, national level assembly or provincial assembly and then a senate level, you know, there is a bill has been passed. So that's a, the, you know, Overall, what is the kind of a benefits can be provided? Say, take an example, let's say like uh, your, uh, you know, provident fund. What is the kind of an interest rate for a provident fund? It's again at the uh, legislation level, you know, things will be taken a call. Next comes your executive level. Executive level is the state government level who implements the rules and regulations like bureaucracy or a provincial and district government or your local government. So at the every state level, how that particular thing has been executed. And the third one is your judiciary thing, this is purely legal aspect of it, where what are the kind of laws are applicable and what is the way actually, you know, they need to follow the procedure and how in accordance with the constitutions or law, it has to be, you know, reflected on the public interest in the, in, in the, in the name of, you know, probably the public interest, how we can probably try to come out with the best kind of, you know, method. So these are the kind of factors which affect the uh, overall organization uh, HR strategies. So if you look at it, actually, you know, HR has been... Uh, governed by various kind of a laws uh, right from the beginning 1920s itself so if you look at it first kind of an act it uh, talks about workers compensation act of 1923 that gives the guidelines as to what is the kind of a compensation has to be pro provided and what are the mandatory kind of an you know compensation and under what ceiling limit so all this thing clearly specifies and there has to be a proper kind of an you know welfare benefits has to be provided how the compensation and pay breakup has to be done and what are the kind of a pay breakups is very very common so if you look at it in india basic pay dearness allowance and hra and cca and uh, you know uh, uh, hra and these are the kind of you know pay components are very very common coming to the next part of it trade unions act uh, 1926 in order to protect the employees interest uh, against the employers you know autocratic uh, movement so they come out of the trade union act it basically for the development of the trade union so in the interest of the employees that this particular act has been designed and the third kind of an act is your industrial dispute act where uh, during the you know uh, what you call it is uh, um, uh, your your trade unionism period if there is any dispute arises how do we try to settle down and when during you know health and hazard related things what is the kind of a way we can protect the employees and those kind of a thing closely related to industrial dispute act your factories act of 1948 which comes in and whereby the health and safety and standards have been given more important and during a work time if an employee uh, leaves or probably you know let's say like uh, loses his uh, life so what is the kind of you know compensation has to be provided and how the healthy and safety has to be looked into it in case of injury of an employee how it has to be treated and what is the kind of compensation has to be provided the next comes your employee provident fund act where uh, you know they made it mandatory that whichever employee is getting a gross salary of six or seven thousand rupees less than that everybody every employee has to be undergone and you know provident fund and uh, this provident fund basically for their so future savings or for the you know the retirement savings you know this will be more useful and minimum wages act of 1948 uh, whereby you know they set certain kind of a standard as to based on looking at the uh, inflation rate and uh, what you call it the city compensations every city they come out with certain kind of a minimum kind of you know wages act uh, initially you know that wages act was hardly about uh, of 300 or 200 but now it has actually been raised to certain you know level where 400 500 uh, rupees per day it has become a you know, minimum kind of a wages and coming to the payment of bonus act 1920 sorry 1965 uh, it's all about you know how the bonus has to be calculated and what are the pay components has to be looked into it and uh, excretia doesn't cover under but you know more often bonus the people who are getting a salary of less than 8000 or 9000 per month uh, as a gross salary they'll be uh, eligible for a bonus so for those kind of bonuses how you know bonus has to be calculated what are the kind of pay 
component has to be looked into it those kind of a thing later 1995 even you know equal employment opportunity concept came into picture whereby you know the persons with the disabilities how you know the different kind of benefit and uh, uh, you know a, a welfare benefits has to be provided so that's what exactly this particular law talks about so as an hr department we need to keep updating about the labor laws and any amendment uh, happens in every budget or probably the fiscal year and accordingly you know we may have to you know revisit on our uh, you know uh, the payment and as well as the compensation related and labor loss related activities coming to the indian hr associations uh, in 1940s and 1950s there are three major professional hr associations were established to acknowledge the importance of hr one of the popular one is the indian institute of personal management that is iipm and uh, the next one is the national institute of labor management and the third one is nhrd in 1980s actually you know the first two indian institute of personal management and national institute of labor uh, management uh, merged together and it has become nipm that is national institute of personal management and uh, you know nipm is the only kind of a group engaged in the uh, advancement of hr industrial relation and labor welfare this is more for manufacturing industry but later after 90s when a service industry developed uh, nhrt has become very very popular that is new national human resource development network and uh, national human resource development network you know mainly for an it industry and service industries they address to their requirement you know they come out with different different kind of you know uh, development and uh, nipm was actually you know working very closely with the hr groups in united states australia and united kingdom that's way actually you know they have an international kind of an affiliations now let's try to look at it uh, how the economy factor can affect the overall you know hr strategies uh, economic factor which affect the hr function is your economic growth so because of that you know competition and uh, because of the competition what happens is like uh, you are forced to rethink in a different way you are fostering the innovations of uh, your own employees and guess get the best out of it so that's the way actually productivity has to be enhanced and industrial labor laws and preferences has to be given and your national population has to be taken into consideration and the per capita income has to be looked into it and your own suppliers when your economy is very bad your own suppliers like your employment agencies and institutions may not be able to provide a best kind of an you know resource and how we actually you know during an economic recession time we try to sustain our employees and try to you know probably get into some kind of you know retaining the employees is a major kind of a challenge and now let's try to look at the technological factors uh, you know when it comes to the technology now today if you look into it uh, everything is becoming more and more high end kind of a technology and more automated kind of you know production happening is so because of the automated productions ultimately you know more intellectual jobs are demanding virtual teams are emerging because in it industry you know the teams will be located somewhere else physically and but they will all act as a kind of a single group and as a hr department for a virtual team it's a very challenging task and jobs becoming more and more challenging and rewarding more interaction happens and more meeting happen and employees are more knowledgeable so as a hr department how do you try to you know probably retain motivate the employees provide a better kind of you know uh, growth that's a major challenge and coming to the cultural factors if you look into it power distance uh, power distance is one of the major factor when we talk about power distance is nothing but the degree to which organization accept power is a major thing if you look into it in india you know we uh, have a lot of power distance that means a distance between a uh, boss and a subordinate is very high and similar way institutional collectivism it's nothing but degree to which organization and institution practice encourage collective kind of an actions and uh, in group collectivism is nothing but degree to which individuals in societies reflect collective behavior so if you look at india actually you know they consider uh, institutional collectivism everybody thinks in the same direction when it comes to organization and uh, each individual reflects the collective behavior you know uh, whatever organization goal it has been percolated at the individual level and ultimately you know everybody uh, represent or probably every individual represent the group behavior and uncertainty avoidance if you look into it the degree to which organization and societies avoid uncertainty by relying on practices and procedures so that way india is you know uh, scores average and performance orientation you know uh, every organization is actually work out a reward and work out a performance excellence and key performance indicators they expect the result or you know purely based on the performance so that's the way india is actually you know uh, more than average kind of a score uh, it is uh, you know uh, taken on so far so that's the way if you look into it cultural factors also play a very very important role in uh, the overall thing 
and ultimately if you look into it when the power distance is very very more ultimately you know what happens is like more and more mechanical structure form in and the more functional oriented structure form in and the organization structure also will change accordingly so that's the way if you look into it cultural factors play a very very important role and uh, you know other than that if you look into it uh, um, the in general for a recruitment and selection in india qualification education qualification is considered to be the major kind of a thing whereas in other countries skills are being given more importance and coming to you know let's say like uh, the the training part of it in organization training in india they have given more important next one uh, education and ultimately you know uh, when it comes to the old governmental kind of you know uh, uh, what you call as recruitment it is purely based on you know quota and it's more the uh, opportunity have been given for caste based kind of a system whereas in a private organization it's totally you know changing now and but private organizations do give an, you know as part of the corporate social responsibilities under disabilities act there are a lot of you know physically enabled uh, you know candidates also have been given an opportunity to serve with the organization so that's the way actually you know they try to showcase a kind of you know concern towards a society so these are the ways actually cultural factors slowly multinational companies which is changing the kind of you know way the indians originally was thinking